I've got three EVs in the family and the other two are the more traditional CCS and whatnot. And they are just, it's painful at some of these chargers. It's just absolutely painful to use. The uh, I can relate a little story that just happened to my wife. Um, she was at a new parking lot in a different town and she found a charger, but it wasn't one of the normal branded ones we used. There was no way to pay for a charge without using their app. So she, mm. she's literally in a parking lot trying to download this app with crappy cell coverage because you're in the basement typically. She finally gets it loaded on. You have to prepay. So she does that. And since she can't get good coverage, she can't get the stupid app to prepay and link up with the charger that she's standing right in front of. Mm. I mean, that's a terrible experience by any stretch. And yeah. that's pretty typical, actually. You know, um, I've had it happen where... I was at a brand name. I was at um, EVgo, or actually it was, yeah, it was EVgo. And there was something wrong with the reader and it kept saying, well, your phone's out of the range. Dude, I'm right next to you. Phone's out of the range. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you think that, you know, for some, for some reason, all of these or many of the companies providing these charging solutions, they're going the app route. And you think that's a huge negative compared to, to the traditional, like, here's a credit card, just, you know, well, charge me. all right. So Tesla's interesting. Tesla owns the stack. So they've signed a contract with the property owner. We will rent this land and give you a slice of the, the money that we earn, but they own and take care of the power. They own the charger system. They own the maintenance. They own the support. They own the cars or they built the cars. They're using it. So it's a closed loop. Mm -hmm. Take EVgo. They'll put a charger in, but they don't own the land. They've signed a contract like everybody else, but they don't service their own gear. Generally, it's third party uh, support for the gear. And they're one of the better ones, which means if I call them up and say, hey, I've got a problem. Somebody picks up the phone and they'll generally give me a credit you know, like a $5 credit because I, I couldn't charge. Sure. If you go to some of the smaller chargers, the no names, as I call them, um, there could be three or four different companies involved. And the one I have down the hill for me has an app, but nobody picks up at the 800 number when there's a problem. And sure. the app is used because that's how they remote manage the charger. Gotcha. Um, and, and, and that charger in particular is kind of troublesome because there's no way to pay other than the app. There's no card reader. Obviously, the the chargers need an internet connectivity to work in their network through the app, right? That's they're doing. Yep. I, I shouldn't say obviously. It's possible they could do something with short range or Bluetooth or other things, but they're not. They're they're doing it via you know network or cellular connectivity. Um, really, you know, in the early days, they always were talking about free Wi-Fi or having good Wi-Fi at charging stations, yeah, and it's right. like you know. If you guys actually did that, or even if you charged for it, it would at least having that Wi-Fi signal there would improve the ability for folks to download your app and actually use it. So it's kind of, uh, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's its a mistake that they kind of glossed over that whole side of providing that service. Um, Te Tesla has a great system though, right? So there, there's, I agree with you. It's just like brain dead simple. You don't need to it know is. anything and it works. Definitely the um, way to go. I'm, I'm wondering though, is like Tesla's also going to suck when they open it up, right? Because other people don't have a Tesla, doesn't know who you are. So you're going to, are they going down the app route? Um, uh, if, if Tesla in the US follows what they did in the EU, it's going to be through the app. You'll, sure. you'll, you'll pull into the, into the slot you'll plug your car in, you go to the app and you say, I'm at charger, blah, blah, blah. Please, you know, please start charging. Right. So if the app doesn't work for any reason, bad cell coverage, no Wi-Fi, whatever they've done, mm -hmm. um, you're kind of screwed. Right. Yeah. So it's really, it's more of the, the, I guess that Tesla is so integrated and convenient when you have the car and the charger. And if you, as soon as you don't have that integration is maybe painful right now with how, you know, folks set it up. 